Greetings and shalom in the Messiah Yahweh, whom the King James Bible says, Christ Jesus. We're going to be again turning over to the book of St. John 543. And we're going to be reading from a red letter edition, King James Bible. And we do appreciate each and every one of you that has taken your time tuning this program. And we believe it'll be a real blessing to you. At the end of the broadcast, we'll give you an address, telephone number, how to receive information. And matter of fact, you'll see different information coming up on the screen. St. John 5.43, we're talking about the memorial name. St. John 5.43 says, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another should come in his own name, him ye will receive. In the broadcast, the last broadcast we had, we had read the book of Romans 9.17. Matter of fact, I'll probably just go ahead and read it. In Romans 9.17, reading from a red-letter edition, King James Bible. Apostle Paul writing the book of Romans, or ever who wrote it. And we know that Apostle Paul is the one that gives authority to it. It says, For the Scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Now, first of all, we got to understand that, that when Apostle Paul was writing this, or had it written, he talks about the Scripture. When the Scripture is mentioned here, it's talking about literally the Old Testament. And, of course, like we've been saying in all the broadcast, this here is the Hebrew Tanakh, written in Hebrew, from Genesis to Malachi. Then this is the original 1611 King James Bible. Then this is the King James Red Letter Edition, was written in 1769. So when we begin to take our Bibles and read them and study them, you know, I believe it's St. John 5, 43, the Messiah said, search the Scriptures, for in them, he was talking about this, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they, talking about the Scriptures, that testifies of me, talking about the Messiah. What I like about this is when the Messiah walked on the face of this earth nearly 2,000 years ago, he didn't have the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. There was no book of Acts, no written New Testament whatsoever. When you take the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the majority of it is given witness of the time of the Messiah's life so when the Messiah's life, when he was born, he was born in what we would call the Old Testament. He died in what we would call the Old Testament. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the only part of their writings are actually giving witness of a New Testament would be after the death and the resurrection of the Messiah. Then we understand that 50 days later, the Holy Spirit would be poured out. And they would still be without a written New Testament. But they were living in a New Testament because the blood of the Messiah was shed. So in the book of Romans, when they begin to write the book of Romans, Paul is quoting 
from, in Book of Romans 9, 17, he is quoting scripture from the book of Exodus 9, 16. Now, I'm going to read 9, 16 because what we're dealing with is the memorial name. When the Messiah said in St. John 5, 4, 3, I am come in my Father's name, that was the memorial name. We're being taught that this memorial name that the Messiah come in, this memorial name that was given for the plan of salvation nearly 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost, they're teaching the church that nobody knows this. It can't be said. We're on here declaring that your Bible says different. Your Bible gives witness to this. First of all, St. John 5, 43, the Messiah said to come in my Father's name. Well, the Messiah didn't come in a name nobody could say. Nobody could write. Nobody knew. And then here in the book of Romans, where we find that it talks about the scripture, saith unto Pharaoh, even with the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name, N-A-M-E, name, this is what it's talking about, same one the Messiah said, he, he come in his father's name, might be declared throughout all the earth. You can't declare something that you can't write. You can't declare something that you can't say. You can't declare something that you don't know. And they're teaching the church that. That makes no sense. We're simple people. You don't have to go to college to understand this. This is the gospel. This here is the gospel. As we go on and study in the New Testament, I'm going to show you that the early assembly gospel was based on this and this alone. That all the prophets, according to Acts 10.43, and the book of Acts was not even written until roughly between 61 to 64, give or take, somewhere within that time. Acts 10, 43, when, when, when this message come to the Gentiles or to the Gentile man known as Cornelius, Apostle Peter, who had the plan or the keys to the kingdom, was the first apostle on the day of Pentecost in the second chapter of the book of Acts, which they didn't have, gave the plan of salvation using this. So what is Acts 2, 38 based on? It's based on Joel 2.32. So if we are forced to go back to the Scripture, then we can begin to understand how our Bibles were laid out. And it's very, very important. In the book of Exodus 9.16, from where the book of Romans 9.17 was quoted from, from the Scripture. The Scripture was there before there was a writing of a New Testament. I like to say it this way. The New Testament, before the Messiah come, was concealed in the Old Testament. Then once the Messiah come and the blood brought us into the New Testament, then the New Testament began to be written. Then this began to be revealed to the New Testament. In the book of Exodus 9, 16, it says, And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up to shew my power in thee, and that my name may be declared 
throughout all the earth. In other words, kol hairetz are in Hebrew is known as the kol hairetz, which means in all the earth. How can you declare a name into all the earth that you can't write, you can't say, you don't know. When you go back and start studying on the taboo of the name, how they have tried to cover it up, hide it, then when the Messiah comes, they're trying to say nobody knew the name. That's, that's the teaching today. I said, that's the teaching today that nobody knew the name. When Apostle Paul, in the book of Romans 9.17, began to quote about Pharaoh and the purpose of Pharaoh, how he was raised up. He's quoting from the book of Exodus 9, 16, and the name that is to be declared throughout all the earth is this. This is the name of Yahweh. It has four letters. There's 22 Hebrew letters in the Hebrew Aleph Bay. Or let's say it this way, the alphabet. The first letter, the small letter to the far right, is known as a Yud. They translate it into English as a, as a Y. Then the next letter is known as a He. Translated in English as an H. Then the third letter is a Wav. They translate it as a W. Then, of course, you have your, your second hay, translate still as an H. This name, through teachings, they're trying to say today that God has many names. The reason why they're trying to get away from this. You go back and study on what I'm telling you. I have got all kinds of literature on this kind of stuff. It's very simple. You would not believe the people that actually believe this. When that Messiah walked on the face of this earth nearly 2,000 years ago, and they looked at him eyeball to eyeball, face to face, you know who they were looking at? They was looking at him. This is Deuteronomy 6 and 4, known in Hebrew as the Shema Yisrael Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Echad. Through tradition, they have taken this name in our King James Bibles and have covered it up. That's what is so amazing. And then you'll hear preachers say that nobody knows this name. That don't even add up. That don't add up at all. The purpose of raising up Pharaoh was not to hide the name, but it was to that that name would be made known throughout all the earth. The Kol Haaretz, or Behol Haaretz, in all the earth. Can you imagine? This is the name of that was in the burning bush. 
Moses had this name revealed to him. People today are being taught totally different. I said they're being taught totally different. Matter of fact, before I go over to the Old Testament, I want to read you some stuff in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts 9 and 15. Now, this was talking about Apostle Paul, but it says this, and the King James reads this way, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. Of course, the word Gentiles in Hebrew is known as goyim, and kings, and the children of Israel. The plan of salvation in the beginning blown strictly to Israel didn't belong to the nations. It belonged strictly to Israel. We talked about this in previous broadcasts. I believe it is so important to understand that the Gentiles would be handed over to them the same gospel that was given to Israel. Not a different gospel. They were handed this over to them. But the Gentiles today are being taught nobody can say it, nobody can use it. This is totally contrary to the word. This is contrary to everything your King James Bible proves. Your King James Bible don't back this stuff up. Your King James Bible is backing this up. In the Messiah's time, when he walked on the face of this earth nearly 2,000 years ago, he come against traditions and doctrines of men. When you say that this was wrapped in a robe of flesh, brother, this shakes people up. I said, this shakes people up. You're not going to find two gods and three gods, four gods, five gods, as many gods you want to. In, in, in Israel, believe in that. They don't believe that. This one true God Isaiah says there's no other God, and he's doing the talking. He says there's no other God. And every prophet gave witness and spoke, thus saith Yahweh. Or sometimes it would say, Naum, Yahweh. I'm sure that they didn't say Naum Hashem or Naum Adonai or Naum Elohim. They spoke this name, but it's being covered up. You read your Bibles, they got books out today that's been written. They'll say the many names of God. What they need to say is the many characters of God with one name. They make words like El Shaddai. Names. These are not names. All this kind of stuff is cover-ups. He was an El Shaddai. He was Yahweh. Uh, uh, I believe it's Roy Fekha. If I'm saying it right, I've got my a paper right here, but with the Hebrew language on it here, but 
you've got people coming up saying all, all, all kinds of stuff. And he's Yahweh, he's Yahweh alone. He's jealous for his name. And his name's going to stand. This is the name, and this is the one that took Pharaoh, raised him up, that this would be declared throughout all the earth. In the book of Acts 15, 14 says, Simon hath declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Now, I encourage any one of you that's listening to this broadcast, if you'll take your King James Bible, you go over on the day of Pentecost, what we find in the book of Acts, book of Acts was not there, Apostle Peter give the first plan of salvation in this. How do I know? I know what my Bible says. I know what the King James Bible's teaching. This is what the Bible teaches you. What we've done, we went through translations. They're teaching that God's got many names. The Bible don't teach none of that stuff. I'm telling you that when Yahweh established Israel, this plan of salvation come to Israel first. Israel had the plan of salvation before it went to the Gentiles. This is what Israel started out with. This is what they started out with on day of Pentecost. Cornelius, we find in the, uh, around the ninth chapter, Our 10th chapter, give or take, so we're in the 10th chapter. Of course, it thinks some of it started in the 10th chapter, but I mean 9th chapter, but 10th chapter. Apostle Peter, who had the plan or the keys to the kingdom, he, he says that to him gave all the prophets witness that whosoever believeth in his name shall re receive remission of sins. The prophets. This is the only name that all the prophets from Genesis to Malachi gave witness to. I said gave witness to. Now, I want to read this again in 15, 14. It says, And Simon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. 1514, this is, this is what it's saying. Simon have declared that God, God, G-O-D, the King James says here, or the word Elohim, and it could be the word for El here. It's going to translate Simon is talking about God. He's talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's talking about the God that raised up Pharaoh. So when he says, and Simon have declared how God, so I know he's talking about God here. It keeps, then continues on. At first did visit the Gentiles. We understand that he's going back and he has to be dealing with the 10th chapter of the book of Acts. We have to understand that because that's when the Gentiles got this after the Holy Spirit was poured out. Now, I'm not talking about proselyte Gentiles on the day of Pentecost. I'm talking about just overall as Gentiles. This message first blown to Israel. Then we understand that Cornelius was actually the first Gentile like the Holy Spirit dealt with. 
But what I'm, what I'm in this verse five, uh, 15, 14 says, And Simon hath declare, declared how God, God, at first did visit the Gentiles. Talking about God did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Whose name? The one he's talking about, God. You know what they're telling us? Nobody can say it. Nobody knows it. Nobody can write it. And it's just like the paper that I had read in the previous broadcast, how they have taken this name and have, through tradition, wrapped it up like a mummy and left it there. When I find the book of Acts 5.14 is talking about how God did visit and God took out a people for his name, N-A-M-E. What is hard about this? Nothing. You know what this is? This is when it comes against tradition. Can you imagine that in the end time, Job was going to restore everything back? Job was going to bring a restoration back to his people. Why would the Gentiles, the Goyim, the nations, have a different plan of salvation than what started out on the day of Pentecost and that belonged to Israel? He said he's going to take the Gentiles and provoke Israel to jealousy. Because you know why? They're going to be handed over to the same God with the same name and the same plan of salvation and the same gospel. And we do appreciate each and every one of you that has tuned in and, and we do appreciate you and we love you. And we hope that you'll call somebody up and tell them that about this broadcast. And the announcer fiction give the address telephone number. It looks like that our time has come and gone. We come on to the same time every week. So time to listen to us now is the time. So till the next broadcast, shalom. You have just heard Hour of Truth with Brother Jerry. If you would like a copy of today's broadcast on DVD, of prayer cloth or other information, phone 770-784-0703 or write 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014. Until next week, we bid you shalom.